oh no, <laughs> this episode will be uploaded to YouTube and other platforms, and they are not free software. <laughs> I'm sorry for <laughs> for this the stupid imitation. I, I was trying to imitate um, Richard Stallman. Uh, but well, today we will be talking about um, free software or open source or uh, libre software, etc., etc., etc. It has uh, several names, but yeah, uh, let's get started. You are listening to The Graph, the English edition of Los Grafe, an international podcast from the Academy of Mecaranto. My name is Laito, and I am fascinated by the incredible power of science. That's the reason why I try to apply it in a radical way for the benefit of humanity. The Graph is a personal space where you can join me in my scientific adventure to change the world. Are you in? Welcome to episode number 12 of Los Grafe, which is also the episode 6 of the English edition, The Graph. Today is July 29th, and it's uh, 7.33 yeah, p.m. Spanish Peninsular Time. For those of you who are watching or listening to this podcast for the first time, the episodes of Los Grafe are divided into two parts. The first part is an exposition where I discuss today's topic, and the second part is a social section where I interact with the, with the audience live, answering questions, addressing criti criticisms, having conversations, or anything else related to the topic at hand. Please keep in mind that English is not my native language. I apologize if I make mistakes or stumble while speaking. So, mm, today's topic, today's topic, yeah, mm, we will be talking about free software. Uh, some people prefer to say open source, or mm, if we have in mind, uh, if we keep in mind that mm, free uh, can have uh, two different meanings, uh, free as in uh, mm, free beer, like uh, it, it hasn't a uh, it doesn't have a, a price, yeah? Or free as in freedom, yeah? Uh, so uh, some people prefer to say libre, which means uh, free as in freedom in Spanish. Um, but yeah, when we say free software, we mean a, a software uh, with the code publicly available. But yeah, if you don't know anything about uh, free software or even software, <laughs> even computers, <laughs> I will try to adapt uh, my words to, to a general audience. So I, I expect, I expect <laughs> even if uh, English uh, is, not my, is not my native language, I expect to, to be clear enough so you can understand uh, uh, today's episode. So, uh, yeah, uh, let's start it. Uh, let's let's get started. Uh, <laughs> uh, free software is science. Okay, how can we start? Yeah. Mm, first of all, um, 
what is software? Uh, software, uh, uh, when we talk about software, we are talking about uh, computers, about specifically about the programs we run on the computer. Mm. And when we talk about uh, free software, uh, we talk about uh, programs uh, that have the code publicly available. Uh, when you create a program, a computer program, you have to you have to write some code, yeah, in in different programming languages, and and that code must be interpreted or or compiled. Compile compiling means to transform the code into into the program, into the software, yeah. Mm. So. so we programmers uh, write code in order to create programs, but that code uh, can be public or can be private. Yeah. For example, when we play video games, of course, uh, um, at least one programmer must have uh, created that video game. But in order to prevent others to to um, modify the game. Yeah, mm, uh, the code is private, so only the the programmer who created the game mm, has access to the original code, to the code uh, that lets you create the, the the video game. And and well, mm, when we talk about free software, mm, we are talking about uh, programs you can of course download uh, from the internet or just uh, you can share the program with your friends. <laughs> mm, but the, the key point here is that the code is public. So anyone can see uh, the code. And of course, if you if you are a programmer and you know how to code, you will be able to to modify the code so you can change uh, the, the, the program's behavior, right? Mm, and 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 why is why is it so important to to share the code or or to have the um, the code publicly available? Um, let's talk about a special project. A special project. That project is called the GNU project. Uh, the GNU project was founded by Richard Stallman on 1983, and and well, mm, I'm not sure if the story I'm about to tell is true. But if I remember well, uh, this project or this movement started when Richard Stallman was working um, at, at the MIT uh, as, a, as a software developer. And the, the printer uh, uh, didn't work, OK? So so he tried to he tried to to fix the the printer the specifically the the software of the printer but uh, the the code uh, was not public mm. so so Stallman asked the the company that uh, responsible for for the printer uh, please uh, share the code with me I'm a software developer and maybe I I I will be able to uh, to to fix the the issue with with the printer, but the company uh, <laughs> never never shared the the code. Mm, I don't know <laughs> if this story is true or not. Uh, I read this story uh, many years ago, so uh, excuse me <laughs> if this is like a, I don't know some some kind of myth or or legend. <laughs> But uh, if we suppose this is true, uh, this would be um, the 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 first mm, the, the key moment <laughs> for Richard Stallman to to realize that mm, all code for from all programs from all software must be public because if you don't have access to the code of the program. Uh, you can't control the program. The, con the program will control you. We can discuss if this statement is maybe a bit, a bit exaggerated, but, but yeah, uh, when we use a computer, we like <laughs> to control what the computer does. 
And if you can't change the code, well, mm, the program will be uh, just what it is, right? Of course, most people uh, don't know how to code, how to create um, software. But uh, when we talk about us, <laughs> about uh, software developers or, or just uh, programmers, we like <laughs> to have access to the code of everything so so that if something doesn't work or or something doesn't work as expected we can change the behavior of the program we can fix the issues or or we can disable the the things we don't like about about our program i don't know maybe uh, we don't like to to be um, to be watched uh, without permission um, we don't like to I don't know maybe we we want to to optimize the the computer memory so so we use uh, fewer resources um, and and maybe some um, some program uh, it's uh, too much memory so so maybe we can optimize the program or or maybe we can we can change that program and and use other instead so so yeah, uh, Richard Stallman understood the need for for um, for all programs uh, having the 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 code uh, shared in public, but <laughs> but uh, it is true that in the beginning when computers uh, were a thing for a minority of people in the world, um, specifically speaking, um, for researchers for for universities. Uh, most code, if not all, uh, were public. But once uh, once computers became uh, available for for most people, uh, then we had um, software companies, and in order to preserve their let's say their their ideas, their their value, um, they didn't like and they don't like <laughs> to to share the code. So, so they, so they keep the the advantage uh, uh, that offers them. But um, Stallman thought that uh, ignoring um, issues that uh, are related to um, to the market, to uh, how to gain money, uh, working as a programmer, um, he thought that this was uh, an issue that concerns ethics. Uh, so, so he truly believed that uh, the code must be must always be public. So, so the users of of um, of computers can be free. Free meaning they control the computer, and 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 not the opposite. So, the goal of the GNU project, Richard Richard Stallman founded, was to create an entire operating system from scratch, while sharing the code publicly. So um, at that point, there was no operating system with all the code, uh, um, let's say, publicly available. Yeah. Um, if you don't know what an operating system, an operating system uh, is a, a set of com a, a set of computer programs that that together works uh, work as one. In, in, in the machine, in the computer. For example, uh, I'm, I'm sure you you will know um, uh, Android, the most popular uh, um, phone operating system. Uh, Android is an operating system. <laughs> and, and, and iPhone, the, the phone uh, produced by Apple, um, iPhone has an operating system, which is called iOS. That's an operating system too. Windows, the most used, Mm, operating system for personal computers and, and laptops, uh, etc. Windows is an operating system. Mac is an operating system, etc., etc. And, and of course there are others, but I'm, I'm talking about the, the most famous ones. Mm. So, so uh, Richard Stallman thought that in order to, to promote um, uh, freedom of, on, on software, um, first of all, we need an entire operating system uh, that that uh, has all the code 
publicly available on the internet uh, and, 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 and more sources. Maybe in, in your university, there's a copy of the code so the students can, can study the, the, the code, etc., etc. And, and the goal was extremely ambitious because um, if you have to, to create an entire operating system from scratch, uh, um, that's very difficult. We are talking about millions and millions of, of lines of code. Mm, and, and this is not the work for one person. So, so the GNU project mm, started to grow and, and, and they, uh, they managed to, to join mm, people from mm, very different countries <laughs> all over the world and, and work together into the goal of creating uh, the GNU operating system. Yeah, uh, the operating system they were working on Mm, uh, was called GNU, uh, and and the GNU, <laughs> uh, I mean the animal, um, uh, represents uh, freedom. <laughs> so so this kind of software, uh, software that has code um, published, so so anyone can access to to it. Um, this software would be called free software, free as in freedom. Yeah. Mm. So. Um, the free software movement started. <laughs> and we may ask, okay, okay, I get the, the general idea, but what is free software if we want to be mm, specific? Well, uh, Ritter Stallman uh, defined uh, free software by four fundamental freedoms, okay? Freedom zero, which is the freedom to use the program for any purpose. Uh, freedom, freedom one, the freedom to study how the program works and change it to make it do what you wish. Freedom two, the freedom to redistribute and make copies so you can help your neighbor. <laughs> and finally, freedom three, the freedom to improve the program and release your improvements and modified versions in general to the public so that the whole community benefits. If you have software without any of these four freedoms, then it is not free software. If, if, we, if we want to accept the, the definition of the Free Software Foundation, uh, which was uh, founded by Richard Stallman too, <laughs> and, and if you are a programmer and want to publish, and want to publish the, the code of your program, uh, freely, uh, openly, uh, on the internet, on, on yeah, generally the, the internet, you must use a free software license, uh, which is as simple as um, sharing the code with with a special file that you can call, for example, license, or maybe add a comment uh, in the beginning of the code. Uh, um, um, writing uh, the, the content of the license you are using and that's it. It's as simple as that. And there are many different uh, free software licenses. The free software licenses that the GNU project uh, advocates um, are the GPL, the AGPL, and the LGPL. Um, the main concept behind these uh, licenses uh, consists in that you, you, of course, you, you support the four freedoms, but if someone takes the code and modifies the code um, and, 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 and then the, the, um, the program you obtain as a result when you transform the code into the real program and, and you share that program, um, you have an obligation of sharing the code too. So you can't change the code and, and then, and then uh, mm, how can I say this? Uh, you can't change the code and, and, and transform the, the original project, with, which was public, into a private project, okay? Mm, and, and we have the, the GPL uh, license and we have the the AGPL license. The difference between these two licenses is that when you produce software 
that will be executed in a server, in a, com in, in a computer that, that acts as a server, for example, a web page, yeah? a website or or maybe a, a database that can be accessed to in uh, using internet mm. there's a difference between this case and the case of um of having a a, a, a program that you will run um, in a personal computer and the difference is that when you run the program into your own computer you can create the, the program from the source mm, in your own computer. <laughs> so if you are suspicious about, about the program, you can mm, compile, meaning you can transform the original code into the program uh, yourself using uh, the tools you like. Okay, But when you mm, connect uh, to, to a server, when you access to a computer that, that acts as a server, you can't do that, okay? When you, when you are um, surfing the web, when you are using the internet, Google, YouTube, Twitter, or any, web, or, or any website, when you use um, WhatsApp or Telegram and, and send a message, um, you are connecting to a server. And of course, you can't control the server you don't know what's happening there so uh, if we want to maintain the the spirit of the gpl free software licenses the agpl is for these cases of software running in 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 a server so for example let's say i create a, a new database okay mm, and of course this database is free software meaning you can see uh, the entire code uh, publicly, mm, but imagine that you uh, download all my code and then you change the code so the program will be different, right? Mm, if you run this program into any other server and don't share the code, and if this program has an AGPL license, uh, then this this is not illegal <laughs> because the license of the of the of my program, uh, which is AGPL, says that you must share the code even if 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 the program is is only running into your server, and 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 we can understand that the the AGPL license is even more strict than the GPL license, right? Mm, of course, maybe you you are not interested in into free software licenses. Uh, I understand that that this can be a, a boring topic, but I just wanted to talk a bit about uh, about them so so you can understand that when we talk about free software, uh, we are not talking only about. Um, about the four freedoms, but uh, the specifics of the license uh, are, are different. And of course, the free software that we obtain as a result uh, will have a more or less freedom. <laughs> mm. and, and then if you ask, okay, but the LGPL, uh, what's for, right? Because GPL is for mm, computer programs that run in your own computer and the AGPL, uh, license is for um, computer programs that run on a server, right? Uh, then uh, what's the LGPL for? The LGPL license is for um, programs or, or libraries, meaning code that is used inside a, 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 whole, uh, a, whole, a whole program. The, the LGPL is for the case uh, when, when you want to share your code, but this code can be used into a project that is not free software, okay? So, so, so you can make it compatible, yeah? So, so the, the LGPL maintains the spirit of, of the free software concept, but it's, most, but it's more uh, permissive, let's say, okay? And you may ask, <laughs> Are there more uh, free software licenses? And the answer is yes, there are many more. 
free software licenses, like the PSD license, like the MIT license, like the mm, Apache license, etc., etc., etc. But uh, I think this is enough. <laughs> um, and, and there's a huge debate about what means freedom, because for the GNU project, freedom means that you can control the code in any situation. Okay, you can control the program because you you have access to the code. But there are uh, other people that have a different interpretation on on what freedom means. Mm. For example, the the licenses BSD and MIT uh, they are designed so that if you decide suddenly to to close to close the code to 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 stop publishing the code and to uh, create a, a new program uh, with with a modified version of the code uh, in 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 let's say in a private way, then you can do it. Uh, and we may think, okay, you have the freedom <laughs> to decide if your code is public or not. This is the concept of the licenses BSD and MIT. But the concept behind the concept of freedom behind the licenses GPL, AGPL, and LGPL is that no, 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 no. Freedom is not about the the producer, about the about the programmer. Freedom is about the user, not not the creator of the program. But uh, freedom is about the user of the program. So as you see, <laughs> there are different interpretations, but. Uh, uh, the the essence of the software we produce uh, is the same the four freedoms and and the free software concept right so um, you may ask yourself what happened because the the first goal of the GNU project was to produce an entire operating system from scratch and of course an operating system that is free software entirely free software well, uh, they did an amazing job. They created many programs, but they needed a special one. They needed a kernel, a kernel. Mm, the kernel is responsible for many things, but if we, if we have to translate uh, what the hell is a kernel <laughs> for a person that doesn't know a thing about computers, we can say, we could say that a kernel is a program that connects all the rest of the programs with the real um, parts of the computer, with the hardware. I mean, with the processor, um, with the with the um, with the graphics card, with the with the mouse, with the keyboard, uh, with your USB devices, etc., etc., etc. So, so the kernel is is uh, the core. <laughs> The core of the of the operating system, and and the GNU project uh, had uh, many troubles with this, and why is that? Because a kernel is a very very complex program, mm, because the code necessary to the necessary code to to support uh, a keyboard or or a CPU or a graphics card or or your mouse or or whatever. Is different for for each product, yeah. So maybe you can support the model the model of one keyboard, but then you have to support uh, hundreds <laughs> of keyboards. You have to support hundreds or, or, or thousands of, of CPUs of of graphics cards, etc. And of course, uh, these products are designed for commercial operating systems. That of course, they are not free software. <laughs> And you have to pay to 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 use the program, and 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 even if you pay, you can't control the program because you don't have access to the code. <laughs> so so you can only do what the program lets you to do. Mm, lets you do, and 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 well, it was it was difficult, and and they and they started a, a project called GNU Hard, uh, H U R D, and GNU Hard was the kernel for the GNU operating system. But they were too ambitious with the kernel, 
and the development of the of the hard uh, kernel was really slow. But what happened? <laughs> um, a guy <laughs> called Linus Torvalds. Um, I think uh, he's uh, from Finland, if I remember well. But yeah, I, uh, an excellent <laughs> engineer, um, an excellent uh, computer develop co computer programmer, <laughs> a software developer, um, decided to create an entire kernel from scratch. And and he was ambitious in 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 other aspects, but uh, he uh, mm, he was able to create an entire community around around his kernel, mm, and and they uh, finished <laughs> they finished the the kernel in nineteen ninety one, uh, even be, even before uh, GNU Hard uh, was finished. In fact. <laughs> Today, in 2023, <laughs> in 2023, we, uh, the, the GNU project, uh, doesn't have GNU hard ready. <laughs> they were so ambitious that even now they don't have GNU hard ready uh, for general use, let's say. So when Linus Torvalds uh, published uh, the Linux, kernel, which is the name of the kernel he created, uh, of course, with the help of mm, many people from uh, very different countries that um, that wanted to, 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 to work on this project, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then the community uh, of the GNU project uh, decided to, to join the GNU operating system with the Linux kernel. So together they form the first entirely free, as in freedom, a operating system in in history. <laughs> so so the new system was called GNU plus Linux, and yeah, this is the first operating system made entirely with free software. So you can access to the code of every single program. So you can modify it, or at least you can be sure of what the hell is doing <laughs> your your operating system. And and this was this was amazing. <laughs> this was amazing. This this is one of the most ambitious projects um, I would even say in in the history of humankind. <laughs> but be, because imagine this: different people from different countries, different cultures, um, living uh, um, in in different places. I mean, um, just using the internet to communicate <laughs> and without asking money. Together, <laughs> they were able to create an entire operating system. And, and this operating system worked even better <laughs> and, and, and was and is even more secure than, than, than popular operating systems like, like Windows or, or we could discuss even, even more secure than Mac. We, can, we could discuss, we could discuss because the, the architecture of Mac and, and GNU plus Linux is is similar uh, and, and, and Windows, uh, if, if you let me being a bit, um, a bit, let's say, non-technical, um, Windows is just garbage. <laughs> but that's just my opinion, okay? Um, so once the GNU plus Linux operating system was born, uh, paths diverged. <laughs> this is sad, but uh, that's how reality works, yeah? GNU, uh, the GNU project, wanted the system to be 100% free, entirely free. But the Linux project, the, the Linux kernel, preferred uh, pragmatism. And why is that? Because um, the, to them, this was not about ethics. This was about uh, pragmatism. This was about, uh, well, the, Linus Torvalds <laughs> once said, that he was coding, he was programming in the Linux kernel, not because some, not not because of some kind of uh, idealism, but because it was fun. <laughs> it was fun to him. So, so yeah. Mm, mm, today, when we talk about, uh, well, when most people talk about 
the GNU plus Linux operating system, they just they just say Linux <laughs> instead of GNU plus Linux. That's that's why when you see Linux in in the media, uh, in some websites, uh, etc., uh, when you see Linux, they are talking about uh, GNU plus Linux <laughs> instead of the kernel. So so there's a there's a confusion here, but. But well, I try <laughs> to be, let's say, loyal <laughs> to, to the original project, and the and the right name, the correct name, is GNU plus Linux. But you know, most most people just just say Linux instead. Uh, that's it. <laughs> and 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 it's funny because once GNU plus Linux um, started to be used, so so more and more people. Mm, uh, installed uh, GNU plus Linux on their computers. Uh, of course, this was uh, this was done by by amateurs or, or by computer developers because you couldn't buy a, a computer with GNU plus Linux uh, pre-installed. Yeah, when you buy a computer, usually you have Windows on it or you have Mac on it. So if you want to use GNU plus Linux, you have to install the system yourself. But some people uh, did it. And the interesting part of this is that GNU plus Linux was excellent for servers, meaning uh, websites, websites, databases, etc. And some companies were really afraid <laughs> of, of the power of GNU plus Linux. And why is that? Because number one, GNU plus Linux is free, as in beer and as in freedom. <laughs> and number two, mm, GNU plus Linux eh, was and is more secure than many popular mm, eh, commercial operating system. And the reason why is that um, there are so many programmers working on the project that is easier to find mistakes, to find bugs, to find errors. Mm. And, and when a company decides to, to keep the code secretly without publishing the code, mm, the, the only programmers that can check if the code is, is right uh, are the programmers of that company. <laughs> but if the project is a free software, a free software pr mm, project, Mm, then anyone can can mm, can not only read the code but uh, can um, um, oh my vocabulary in English sorry um, the word is uh, to anyone can uh, yeah anyone can make a contribution so so if you if you are a programmer. And, and, and you are reading some code, for example, from, from the Linux kernel, and you find something that is wrong, maybe you can you can ask to to you, you can make a contribution. And and once the 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 people that work officially on the on the Linux kernel, uh, once they read your your proposal, your contribution, uh, if if they if if they consider uh, it is right, uh, then your your contribution will be applied to to the official project. So so this is the this is the the power of the of the free software concept. So you can't compete <laughs> with this because the entire internet is working on on on, on Linux. The entire the entire internet uh, can work on on the GNU project and many other uh, free software projects. So. It is famous. <laughs> the 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 words of um, Steve Ballmer, uh, Microsoft's uh, ex CEO, mm. in an interview in in two thousand and one with the Chicago Sun Times, Steve Ballmer said, "Linux is a cancer that attaches that attaches itself in an in an intellectual property sense to everything it touches." Uh, they were convinced <laughs> that, if I remember well, they even called um, uh, Linux communism. 
This is communism because it is free. The code is public. What the hell is this? Uh, we advocate for private property, so the code must be private, etc., etc., etc. But years later, <laughs> in in 2014, the next uh, Microsoft's CEO, uh, Natia, Natia Nadella, uh, appeared <laughs> in a in a in in uh, i'm not sure if this is called a um, press conference or conference press uh, I, I don't know but uh, nadia nadella appeared with uh, a giant image image uh, beh behind him uh, and in that image uh, you could see microsoft loves linux <laughs> and instead of loves a heart <laughs> wow just uh, 13 years between the words from uh, Steve Ballmer and, and, and this uh, incredible statement <laughs> saying that Microsoft loves Linux. And, and if you wonder uh, why is happening, uh, why this happened, mm, this is because uh, Linux is extremely useful, okay? Mm, the fact that the, that the code is public and that anyone can 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 make some contributions or improve the code, mm, this has an, a tremendous advantage, especially for servers where security is mm, even more important than in personal computers. Because if the security of a of a server is compromised, mm, then the the attacker has access to all the data of the server. And, and and to all the data of every single one of the of of, of each user uh, that is uh, that is using the the server or or that uh, has an account uh, etc. So so servers are critical, <laughs> and 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 Linux is a, a well designed system. There are better systems, of course, but um, GNU, GNU plus Linux is is uh, is beautiful. <laughs> I, I I don't want to to get technical, uh, so so that everyone can can follow the the episode. But um, just uh, just one key uh, info for you: most uh, computer servers in the world today are you they are using they are using GNU plus Linux. Okay, and in the, and if we uh, see the the ranking the top list of supercomputers all of them all of them are using are using um, gnu plus linux all of them of course gnu plus linux is not perfect of course gnu plus linux was not designed um from from up to bottom because because gnu plus linux is a mix <laughs> Of, of different programs that were developed um, in separate um, moments, in separate projects, etc. So of course, it's a bit hacky. It's a bit, um, it's a bit forced, right? Because you know the Linux kernel was not designed to be used in GNU. Uh, the kernel of GNU uh, should have been uh, hard, <laughs> GNU hard. But, but well, uh, <laughs> in the end, <laughs> the the over the operating system uh, the GNU project wanted to to create, uh, the end result was a, a mix of of different projects. But uh, if we are pragmatic, um, we have to accept that today, uh, GNU plus Linux is extremely useful. <laughs> And and don't have a, any close competitor. This is reality. <laughs> this is reality. Mm. And even uh, in 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 personal computer, in personal computers, uh, GNU plus Linux is very useful. Right now, while I am speaking uh, and using my computer, uh, I'm running GNU plus Linux <laughs> on my computer. Okay, I'm not using Windows. I'm not using um, Mac. I'm using GNU plus Linux. And you see, I can surf the web. I can uh, produce this podcast. 
uh, I can, of course, I can pro, I can uh, code, etc., etc., etc. But, uh, but yeah. Mm. After becoming popular, mm, the concept of of free software. Mm, there are two main philosophies mm, in the free software movement. Uh, we could talk about the the original concept of free software, uh, which is uh, free software, <laughs> and, and 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 the and the new concept. Uh, of open source, mm, and, and what's the difference between free software and open source? Uh, when we talk about free software, we are talking about idealism, meaning all software must be free, free as in freedom, meaning uh, the code is public, right? Mm, it's an ethical issue, but when we talk about open source software, mm, we talk about pragmatism, meaning Public source is more practical. It's a technical issue. This is the the, the main difference bet between uh, these two concepts. And of course, <laughs> mm, companies <laughs> love the concept of open source <laughs> because uh, to them, uh, some code is so critical that can't be published. <laughs> because then they could lose the, the advantage over their competitors. Mm. And, and, and today, uh, big companies like Google, like Facebook, like Twitter, even Microsoft, all of them, they work on free software projects. Amazing, true, <laughs> isn't it? But uh, the critical parts of, of their programs or or maybe entire projects like Windows or, of course, the, the Google searcher, <laughs> they are not <laughs> free software. So when they work on free software, that's because the community that uses and, and contributes to the project can accelerate or, or improve the support of the project. You may say, well, companies are, are using in a bad sense, <laughs> the work, the free work of, of many people. And the answer is yes. <laughs> yes. And I will give you one example. Uh, what's the most popular uh, web browser in the world today? Uh, Google Chrome. Well, Google Chrome is based on a free software project called Chromium. And, and do you know somebody that uses Chromium? <laughs> Most people are using Chrome, but 99% of the code of Chrome is, Chrome from, is code from Chromium, which is the free software project. So, so Google is a smart, <laughs> it's a smart company. Google says, okay, this is my open source or free software project, uh, Chromium. Uh, please help help me uh, develop the software for free <laughs> because anyone can use it, right? But then I use my power, my my resources. I use money <laughs> to to promote Google Chrome, to have Google Chrome Google Chrome pre-installed in every single Android phone, to 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 suggest when you are uh, using Google. And I don't know, maybe you are using Firefox or Opera or 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 Microsoft Edge or, or Safari or, or whatever. And, and then I suggest to you to, to use Chrome instead of instead of Chromium. And 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 these uh, programs are are the same. If you use Chromium, you can do almost anything that that, that you can do in in, in, in Chrome, but well, mm, mm, Google benefits <laughs> from 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 the use of Chromium, yeah. And and today um, there are uh, projects like Opera, like um, Microsoft Edge. I mean, different web browsers, and and they decided to to 
to use Chromium like uh, Chrome did, so they can benefit too <laughs> for the work of the of the community without without sharing uh, all the code they have for 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 every single one of these web browsers. Yeah, it is sad <laughs> that uh, as the Free Software uh, Foundation says, uh, free software is an ethical issue. And the concept of open source is used by companies. Uh, but <laughs> of course, we could discuss this in political terms. But I don't like to 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 do that. I like to to discuss this in in technical terms. And we may ask, what's the alternative of open source? What's the alternative of uh, having uh, companies? Uh, utilizing using uh, uh, the work the free work of many people on on these open source projects the alternative is uh, programs that are not free software at all <laughs> imagine google chrome uh, without chromium meaning uh, the, the 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 product uh, would be uh, would not wouldn't be as good as it is today, because the only uh, people that could uh, make contributions would be uh, workers of Google. If I don't know if 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 Linux was uh, if if Linux were not um, free software or or open source software, um, it. It would be difficult to 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 support so many computers in and and to be um, so secure and 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 so tested. So if we have to choose between uh, publishing the code or or not, I prefer to publish the code, even if some companies will will use the free work of of, of good intended uh, uh, programmers. <laughs> On the internet uh, just for free yeah mm, but the, the alternative the, the alternative would be a less secure world a less secure internet <laughs> uh, and, and and worse programs so of course i would love to 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 live in a world where uh, all computer programs are free software but well we have to be pragmatic and 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 i prefer uh, that at least 99% of, of Google Chrome's code is public in a different project in Chromium. I prefer that <laughs> instead of entirely closed source. Uh, so, so, so yeah. Um, if you ask me, uh, maybe, uh, maybe you are thinking that I prefer the term open source, but I just don't care. <laughs> I use free software or I use open source and and I don't care <laughs> because because even if I love to be technical instead of ethical because if you are ethical you can't solve the conflict because there will always be people that think and that feel different than you but if you are technical then you can solve the problem right mm, to me that's the the correct approach for most things if not all in life but at the same time i recognize that uh, the free software movement uh, was started with clear goals and even if i consider myself pragmatic and and and, and technical um, i would love to 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 live in a world where uh, all the code is public so so yeah i like both concepts yeah that's my that's my position mm. and well let's talk about um, a few examples of free software we have uh, um, operating systems that are free software or open source for example we have GNU plus Linux uh, but we have um, more operating systems we have FreeBSD which was created uh, if I remember well a few years or 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 maybe just one year after I'm not sure but uh, FreeBSD uh, was created in in an university environment in an academical environment 
um, with a similar architecture to GNU plus Linux, but, but in this case, the entire operating system was well designed. <laughs> it is not a mix of different projects. So, so yeah, the quality <laughs> of FreeBSD is higher than GNU plus Linux, but FreeBSD is not as popular and as, as GNU plus Linux. So it's difficult to support uh, all hardware or or most programs on, on FreeBSD. But, but FreeBSD is used in many popular systems. For example, Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5. These mm, video game platforms, they are using FreeBSD. The operating system is FreeBSD. Amazing, <laughs> the power of free software of course, but uh, Nintendo and Sony uh, is using uh, FreeBSD without, uh, without paying anything. They are using the free work of many people. Yeah, that's right, but, but what's the alternative? The alternative would be mm, mm, uh, 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 an operating system for, for, these, uh, for these video game platforms with, with less quality with more bugs, etc, etc, etc. We would love <laughs> that Sony and Nintendo uh, pay a lot to the FreeBSD project or, or to contribute uh, high amounts of, of um, financial and human resources. Uh, it's not the case, <laughs> as to my knowledge. But, but yeah, the, this is reality. Another example, the servers of WhatsApp and the servers of Netflix, they are using FreeBSD. Wow, amazing. <laughs> mm. and, and, and well, uh, if we talk about GNU plus Linux, um, GNU plus Linux is a mix of different projects. So the philosophy of the system invites you <laughs> to modify the system. And, and the consequence of that is that there's no one single GNU plus Linux. There are many different flavors of GNU plus Linux. They are called distributions. So the, the most famous distribution of GNU plus Linux is called Ubuntu. Ubuntu. And, and, and there are many more. You have Debian, you have Fedora, you have Arch Linux, you have Linux Mint, you have OpenSUSE, uh, you have Gen2, <laughs> you have a lot of distributions and, and, and most of the code is the same, <laughs> but they have different names, they have different uh, logo types <laughs> and, and they have different behavior because maybe the mix of programs they, they choose, of course, they use the Linux kernel and they use the, the GNU uh, utils, the, the GNU tools, but for example, the way of managing the different uh, packages or the different programs uh, is different. Um, I don't want to, to get technical, but um, in Debian and Ubuntu, for example, uh, you use APT uh, in order to manage your packages. Packages, I mean the, the programs, yeah? Um, but in Fedora, you use DNF, which is a different package manager. And in Arch Linux, you use Pacman, which is a different package manager. And of course, there are different philosophies. Some GNU plus Linux dis distributions or distros, some distros prefer to be as free as possible. Others prefer to be pragmatic. So today, most distributions are not entirely free. <laughs> and even the Linux kernel is not free today. Sad, <laughs> but the Linux kernel has blobs small portions of code uh, that um, uh, that well small por small portions of, of binary data that uh, which code is not public so for example maybe Intel the the company that works on on, on chips on processors on on, on CPUs um, maybe Intel uh, contributes uh, some free code for the Linux kernel, but uh, maybe Intel wants to give support 
to the Linux kernel for some uh, hardware without sharing the code. So instead of contributing the code, they contribute the final part, the final um, program or, or the final component of, of the kernel. And, and the Linux project is pragmatic. <laughs> And they accept the contributions even if they are not uh, public, even if the code is not public, it's not free or open. And, and that's why the GNU project uh, uh, has its own version of Linux. <laughs> it is called Linux Libre. Libre uh, means free as in freedom in, in Spanish. And, and when you go to gnu.org, to the official website of the GNU project, they recommend um, GNU plus Linux Libre distributions. <laughs> so you will not see there uh, Ubuntu or Debian or Fedora or Arch or many other popular GNU plus Linux distributions. You will see there uh, um, very uncommon distributions that are entirely free, like Triskel, like Parabola, like uh, I think a pure OS, etc., um, etc., cetera, et cetera. and and I, I will talk about a bit more about about this uh, these different philosophies, etc., uh, because it's it's interesting. But uh, if, we, if we want to talk about other examples of free software, we have of course web browsers. Um, we have the Firefox web browser. Uh, we have the Chromium web browsers. And we have many more, but the most popular ones are, are these two. Of course, <laughs> Firefox is always free, but uh, in the case of Chromium, most people don't use Chromium, but uh, a different flavor of Chromium, which is not free software, like Google Chrome, like Microsoft Ads, like Opera, etc., etc. Then, of course, we have programs to, to reproduce um, to play videos, to play music, or to design uh, images like, I don't know, for example, uh, the famous uh, VLC uh, video player, right? Or, or the famous um, image editor uh, called GIMP, or, or the famous uh, 3D uh, designer uh, called Blender, or the famous <laughs> vectorial image uh, designer called Inkscape. There are many, many, many uh, programs which are uh, free software, and and some of them are even more are some of them are even more popular than than the private versions that that the closed sourced uh, uh, programs, and in other cases not. For example, um, Adobe Photoshop is more popular than than GIMP. Uh, but in the case of video players, I think that that VLC, uh, I'm not sure if it's the most popular uh, video player, but but it's one of the most uh, popular, uh, at least in in, in personal computers. Um, and well, of course, uh, when we are talking about uh, um, developer tools uh, in order to produce uh, computer programs, <laughs> Most tools these days are open source, are free software. For example, programming languages like Python or, or, or Rust or PHP and many others, they are free software, meaning that the tools you use to work with these languages, like the compiler or, or maybe your favorite um, text editor, like, I don't know, like Visual Studio Code or, or Eclipse or, or Vim or Emacs or whatever, they are free software. Even databases, uh, most databases are free software like MySQL or MariaDB or, or PostgreSQL, uh, MongoDB, etc., etc. There are many names. Um, well, of course, uh, there are commercial <laughs> database. there, 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 databases. There are commercial programming languages and, and, and there are commercial uh, text editors. But um, today, uh, you can work without any issue. Uh, in 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 any kind of project you want, using just uh, free software, which is amazing. I, I, imagine imagine <laughs> uh, being in 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 the seventies or in the eighties, 
when 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 this concept of free software was was not as popular as as it is today mm, the the movement has advanced a lot a lot in the last decades and and the the proof of that is that uh, i'm using GNU plus linux <laughs> Uh, most of the programs I use are, are open source programs and, and, and I'm free, meaning I can use my computer and I can, uh, and I can control the computer in a deep sense <laughs> and, and I can configure everything in, in, in any way I want. Uh, if I were using Windows or other private uh, operating system, um, of course, I could configure and, and, and do some things, but I don't have full control over my system. Um, so, GNU plus Linux. Uh. <laughs> okay. And finally, I want to talk a bit about, about idealism versus pragmatism. And why? Why is that? Because uh, many years ago, <laughs> I was extremely idealistic with the concept of free software. I was like um, Richard Stallman. I thought that all code must be public. All software must be free as in freedom. Uh, so I refused. I refuse. I reject um, any program that is not free software. Uh, so I will not use Windows um, in any situation. I will not use Mm, any program that is not uh, open source or, or free software. And, and of course, <laughs> I, I installed <laughs> into my computer uh, mm, extremely uncommon or rare <laughs> distributions like Triscale, like Parabola, like Ututo, <laughs> like Pure OS, mm, like uh, I think Dragora is another. Mm. And how was the experience? Uh, it was terrible. It was a terrible experience, uh, believe me, <laughs> because of course you can have an entirely 100% free, as in freedom, uh, operating system, meaning all the programs from the first to the last, they have it, th their code publicly available. So, so, so yeah, you you have mm, the security of that. Uh, there's no spyware. <laughs> Uh, the programs uh, will always do what they what they are meant for, and if if someone discovers anything, it's easily you can easily change this. But uh, what happens when um, when you have some hardware? I mean, for example, like a, a webcam or a microphone or a graphics card that is not supported in in free software uh, kernels or, or or whatever what do you do if your webcam can only work with with private software with with closed source uh, software mm, you can't use your webcam if your webcam requires that kind of or that kind of support uh, for example my graphics card uh, many years ago and even today is an NVIDIA graphics card and, and that graphics card which is the part of the computer that that uh, process uh, the graphics meaning uh, when you play a video game or, or the effects when, when you when you are moving your windows or or when you watch a video and, and you want and you want that that video to 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 move let's say uh, in a fluid way you 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 don't want to to have a, like a small stops all the time, right? You you want mm, 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 the most frames per second as possible, right? Mm, that that work is done by by the graphics card, and Nvidia graphics cards are are famous <laughs> for have for having a let's say bad support <laughs> in 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 platforms that don't use uh, that that only use open source software so if you want to to use your nvidia graphics card um, um, in a proper way 
en GNU Plus Linux, you must install the private drivers of, of NVIDIA, which of course are not free software. And, and, and then the Free Software Foundation or the GNU project or Richard Stallman would say, this is an ethical issue. You must not install the private drivers. You must use the free driver, the free driver drivers, but the free drivers are not made by NVIDIA. They are made by, by volunteers uh, from different countries that try to to support the, the graphics card mm, uh, as best as they can. And, and of course, uh, in this case, it's very difficult. It, it's a very difficult task. <laughs> so of course, you, it works, but mm, the power you obtain uh, from, from these divers is, is a hell lot uh, uh, smaller <laughs> than than the official uh, private drivers. So, so yeah, I have issues uh, in these distributions, in, this, in these distros, I mean, to scale, parabola, etc. I had issues with some microphones, with some webcams, and of course, with my graphics card. <laughs> and of course, I couldn't install a uh, popular software. Mm. I, I couldn't uh, use uh, some features on, on, on web browsers, for example, in order to use Netflix or, or similar platforms, you must support uh, something called DRM. But uh, DRM is designed to, to prevent or to try to prevent <laughs> uh, that you stole videos from, from these platforms. People uh, keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but well, uh, they, they try, they try. And of course, DRM is not public, it's not free software. And of course, if DRM controls your computer instead of you controlling your computer, this can't be free software. <laughs> so free software, 100% free software distributions, they oppose to DRM and, and other things. So when you are using an entirely free uh, operating system, you must know that the support for some for some hardware mm, won't be there for long, that you won't be able to use some websites, that you won't be able to install some programs that are not open source of, or, or free software. And it's hard, it's hard. I tried, I really tried, uh, believe me, but pff, in the end, uh, I, I prefer to be pragmatic. Um, and, and of course, there are different levels of pragmatism. Um, the worst level of pragmatism to me is, is a, a Windows, <laughs> meaning um, to hell with uh, open source or to hell with free software. I just use whatever, uh, whatever works. But that's not pragmatism. <laughs> <laughs> because free software is useful. You can uh, you can do many things with free software. And, and, and in private software, you have a less secure system. You can't control your system entirely. And, and you even have to pay. <laughs> you have to, to give money to companies. And, and free software, uh, if you don't, if you can't contribute, uh, let's say, some money to, to, the, to any project, even in even if that even in that case, you can use <laughs> the software. So, so uh, many advantages <laughs> for you. So, so yeah, I I I have I have a problem. <laughs> I have an issue with myself when when choosing the proper opera, the proper operating system or or the proper distro <laughs> of, of 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 GNU plus Linux. And, and this issue is called distro hopping <laughs> because you keep jumping from distro to distro to distro <laughs> trying to find your operating system because each system has its advantages and, and its disadvantages. And, and well, it's difficult to find a, a, an operating system, a, a distro that, that works for you in, in, in all the cases. So I have tried 
dozens <laughs> of different distros. Mm, some of them are entirely free software. Some of them uh, are entirely so are entirely free software like Debian, but they allow to install um, private software if you if you have the need. Mm, some of them have mm, private software pre-installed, so so you have support for some graphics cards or or some um, external devices like like webcams or microphones or or whatever uh, or bluetooth uh, devices mm. and of course they have different philosophies different designs uh, <laughs> i don't have the time to to keep uh, looking for the best distro for me <laughs> so so today i'm using debian mm. Uh, a few weeks ago, I, I, like uh, maybe a month ago, I was using Fedora, but oh my God, the support of NVIDIA graphics cards in Fedora uh, in, in, the, in the last versions, uh, it is terrible. It is terrible. I'm sorry. Uh, a, a few years ago, NVIDIA worked perfectly in Fedora, but these days uh, there, there's an issue called tiering. Uh, Turing, and uh, which consists in in when you are watching a video, you you see like like um, um, like or some some kind of horizontal lines because the the frame the the, the part the, the upper part of the of the frame is not synchronized with the bottom part of the frame, so it, it's difficult to <laughs> to explain the the sensation you feel, <laughs> but but that's not working properly <laughs> and and you can only uh, mm, detect this issue uh, with your eyes <laughs> when you are watching a video with with many with movement because if you are writing some text or reading a web page uh, it is difficult to notice this this problem but i want mm, a fluid <laughs> i want mm, proper frames per second and I want uh, mm, I want to use my computer uh, in, in the proper way <laughs> so 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 even in Fedora using the private uh, drivers of Nvidia uh, I had this problem and I was tired of it so I changed it back to to Debian because the philosophy behind Debian is is to be as stable as possible. So, so when new versions are published, uh, I mean, for programs, uh, configuration files, etc., uh, they have been tested a lot. So once they are sure that that this that the new version works well, then you can update. But Fedora has a different philosophy, and, and the philosophy of Fedora is. Uh, to use the last version as soon as possible. <laughs> of course, there are more extreme versions of this philosophy, like, for example, in Arch Linux, another distribution, <laughs> another distro. In Arch Linux, in Arch Linux, you uh, you used the you used the last version of everything, <laughs> over of everything. The philosophy is so extreme that Arch Linux itself doesn't have versions the versions uh, the, the versions of arch linux are dates <laughs> meaning the arch linux of yesterday the arch linux of today the arch linux of tomorrow etc 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 it's not in it's not like i don't know debian for example i'm using debian 12 and uh, the previous version was debian 11 but you can't uh, talk about a uh, Arch Linux uh, versions because they don't exist. You ha you talk about dates, so th this is the concept of rolling release distribution. So they they are um, they are the the vanguard <laughs> of 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 Gnome Linux distributions. And of course, there are many 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 different concepts. You have, for example, Gentoo, a rolling release distribution like Arch Linux, but in this case. Uh, you don't download uh, programs to your computer. You download the code <laughs> and you use compilers to create the program <laughs> you downloaded 
into your own computer. Of course, this is extremely slow <laughs> if you compare it to just uh, downloading the program as most uh, operating systems in the world uh, do. <laughs> but but uh, the result is that Gen 2 X is extremely uh, configurable. <laughs> uh, in fact, uh, uh, Gen 2 uh, consider, considers itself not a distro, not a distribution, but a meta distribution <laughs> because you have configured so many things and you and you compile the code yourself so 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 yeah it's uh, if you have a lot of free time <laughs> and you love to to tweak to to test to 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 configure your your computer in every single detail gen2 is for you <laughs> But well, I love to do that. In fact, I have tried Gen2 uh, like two or three times, <laughs> but I don't have enough free time because I, I, I just want to work or to use my computer. <laughs> I don't want to 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 be hours to, to, to keep working hours just for um, configuring something or or just uh, make um, preparing a huge a huge update, right? So <laughs> so yeah. It's difficult. It's difficult. I, I would love to talk more about uh, other distros, um, but I think that uh, that it's enough. Uh, the, the previous episode of Los Graph in English was about three hours long, <laughs> and I'm not sure if today uh, we will have um, uh, questions or 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 criticisms or, or or comments or whatever in in the social section, but. But I just want to finish the, the exposition now. And, and if you have questions or anything, you can you can ask in the in the social part of this episode of Los Grafe. Okay. Uh, here we are in the chat room of Twitch. And uh, it seems there are no questions. <laughs> there are no questions today. In 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 the Spanish episodes of Los Grafe, there are there are many. Well, many. Uh, usually, there's at least uh, one question. But I understand that most of my audience uh, today uh, speaks Spanish, so so it's difficult to 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 have audience uh, at least at, at this moment that uh, mm, that can ask uh, questions or or comment or or whatever mm, especially because mm, the the english episodes of los grafe uh, english episodes are 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 uh, they are launched created i i'm not sure of the word but I I do these episodes in in Saturdays. So uh, at this time uh, in in it, it's not the same. I, I'm not sure if it's the the proper the proper day, but uh, this is the day I can. <laughs> this is the day I can do this episode. This episode. So I hope that in the future, maybe in, in some months later or. <laughs> Or I don't, I don't know. Maybe some months later, I have a, a, a community of English speakers that can ask questions uh, live, but it's not the case today. So this means that this is the end of the episode of today. So if you want to support me, so I can continue creating episodes like this one and have more resources for my scientific adventure, you can become a patron on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash Lito. You can also follow me on my social media under the name Lito Mecadimon. And well, that was it all. So see you next time. <laughs>